Hey everyone, this is Anthony with uh, Precision Laser and Instrument. Today we're going to be going over the GeoSlam Zeb Vision, uh, which has been pretty popular um, because it's now finally able to colorize mobile LiDAR data, uh, especially with the GeoSlam product. Uh, we had the Zeb camera at one point, but it didn't work too well considering it was uh, colorizing off of video and it didn't have the same depth um, or the same coverage as the, the Zeb Vision camera does. So here's an image of it. Um, as you can see, it's a 360 panorama camera mounted on top of the unit, um, bolts directly to the back, plugs into the auxiliary and camera uh, ports on the side of the on the side of the Zeb Horizon. Um, main things with it, as far as data collection, is you want to move a little bit slower than you would by collecting uh, standardly with the uh, the Zeb Horizon unit. Um, so obviously it cannot be vehicle mounts that are using that uh, capacity. Um, from what I've heard as well is it actually works better on a backpack unit, but it can be, uh, can be handheld. Um, the, the collection process is the exact same. So just walk around and collect your information. Naturally, if it's a darker area, it's like with any other scanner out there, you're not going to get good imagery that way best times to scan and collect imagery is obviously on overcast days uh, but there are some things we can do with the imagery to make it uh, make it look pretty good um, so firstly uh, you'll download your geoslam data just the way you normally would right off the data logger using your usb thumb drive uh, the zeb vision camera comes with a cable it's a, uh, a proprietary cable uh, one end uh, plugs in the back of the camera. The other end is an RJ45 or an Ethernet connection. Uh, so it generates a pan uh, in between the computer and the camera. And on that camera, you'll essentially have uh, your project. So it, and it just labels them project one, project two. Um, and you'll also have a camera cal uh, JSON file. So if you took your GeoSlam, if you bought the Zip Vision, you took that to the dealer, the dealer should have done a test scan with it uh, provided that your current camera calibration file along with that test data and send that over to GeoSlam for them to send you back the, the, the properly calibrated JSON file. Um, there's also a firmware update that needs to happen on the data logger itself. Uh, your dealer can do that for you um, or you can do it yourself. It's really not all that complicated. Uh, in order to use the uh, in order to use the, the imagery inside of the Connect software, you need to make sure that this JSON file is copied and pasted into your imagery folder. So you can see here's the imagery folder, as well as all the image that it takes. And you'll notice you'll see an F and an R. That's the front and rear facing cameras. All we have to do now is import this data into Connect. So you cannot colorize the point cloud data with the hub software. You have to use Connect to do this and, and preferably Connect 2.1.1, uh, which is the, the latest version. So inside of our Connect, we're gonna come here um, and create a new project. So we'll just call this Zeb Vision. And we'll choose our uh, process. So we're gonna use Process Slam and Colorize with GeoSlam Vision. And we'll say Create Project. Now once we're in here, we're going to click on here to, to browse for our data. And you'll see here, it'll say, what's your GeoSlam data set? So I'll drop this thing down. We'll go to uh, my Zeb Vision data, choose my GeoSlam file. And over here is our Vision folder. Like I said, we'll choose our Project 1 folder. Make sure that JSON file for the camera is inside of there. Otherwise, it will fail. And we'll hit Select. And down here is our contrasting options. And our contrasting options here, we're actually going to bring these things down to be a little bit darker. This was a this was a sunny day, um, so it wasn't overcast, obviously. So we're just going to drop this thing down to a one. And again, I supposedly GeoSlam is coming out with a manual here soon, to sort of explaining how these what these settings are. Um, this is just from my own experience, uh, at least with this particular data set. Now every single data set may be a little bit different, so we can adjust these things however we need them to be. Um, but this is what, this is what good for this data set. And then down below here, uh, this is where you're basically going to choose. It's going to be backpack or handheld. This was handheld. Um, and from there, that's fine. Just go ahead and hit import and it's going to start processing your data. No sense in having you guys sitting here waiting for this data to process. This could take anywhere between 10, 10, 15, 20 minutes. It just depends on a, your computer and B, uh, how much data you collected. So we'll bring you back whenever this data is processed. All right, now that the data has been processed, if we hit this uh, little drop down arrow here, we can see we have several files here. So trajectory file, 
So, you know, basically the red line through the data, your walking path. You have the GS Vision data, which is the imagery, um, the LAZ file, uh, and this is the color LAZ. So if I double click on this, it's going to load it up over here. And you can see here's the, the, the point cloud, and this is colored by elevation. So whenever you load data into here, this little bar here shows up, and we're able to do a few things. Now, one of them is color mode. So we can change this to RGB, and now you can see that the, uh, that the point cloud is now colorized. Um, if we double click here, we can load up the trajectory so you can see the walking path. We can also disable that. And if we double click the, the vision, uh, these are the, actually the imagery. So if we turn the trajectory back on, you can see the images follow the same trajectory path. So what's kind of nice inside of here is now this is colorized. I can actually click on any one of these spheres and it will drop me into um, the view where we're actually able to look through the camera itself. So down here we have this other viewer so I can double click um, on any one of these little photospheres and it will load me into that location. And if I want to take measurements inside of here, I can actually toggle the measurement uh, measurement tools on. And if I hold down, let's say, the M key and click on two coordinates, and click on two coordinates, it will actually give me what that what that dimension is. So kind of handy being able to go into your data sets and be able to pull measurements out of it and be able to look at the imagery. So, and if you want to get the LAZ file out of here, all you have to do is right click on it, say open file location, and it will bring you to where that file location is. And we can copy and paste that and bring it over in the other software that we want and, and uh, where we want to use the colorized point cloud. So that's it. I'm not going to deep dive into connect. Rather, just show you how to colorize the data in order to get yourself started. Um, any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to get back to them. See you in the next one.